Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Look at that beautiful graphic, all of my Twitch homies. Twitch.tv slash F4W video. Video.f4wonline.com. My God, I look orange today. I'm using the uh, special MJF filter for today's show. Holy smokes. Hey, listen, we got a lot to get into here today. And uh, we're opening up with some, uh, uh, I would consider this pretty bad news. TMZ Sports reports Cain Velazquez has been booked on an attempted murder charge after being involved in a shooting that took place in San Jose, California on Monday. UFC legend Cain Velazquez spent Monday night in jail TMZ Sports has confirmed the 39-year-old has been arrested and booked on an attempted murder charge. Details surrounding the specifics of his arrest are unclear. The law enforcement sources tell us the former fighter was involved in a shooting in San Jose at around 3 p.m. near a local high school. In the alleged incident, one person was shot while another was arrested. Nothing further surrounding the circumstances of the situation has been released. Jail records show Velasquez is still in custody as of Tuesday morning, has a court date set for Wednesday at noon. NBC Baseball reported the shooting was reported at 3.14 p.m. Monday afternoon. One man was shot, taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. People were asked to avoid the area after the shooting. As police conducted the investigation, Velasquez currently being held without bail. So uh, we don't know officially anything more about the story at this point, but uh, I would expect that uh, sometime soon there's going to be more details coming out about this story. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Don't want to talk too much more about Cain Velazquez. I'm sure that more information is going to come out in the next couple of days, but uh, I've been told there's a story here. Obviously there's a story, but uh, anyway... I wish I could say more, but uh, we'll just wait. So anyway, WWE and A&E have announced an expansion of their programming partnership. The multi-year expansion will see more than 130 new hours of WWE-themed programming air on A&E. This includes the return of biography WWE Legends, WWE's most wanted treasures, like uh, fans, Along with the debut of a new series tentatively named WWE Rivals, A&E has ordered 35 new biography episodes, 24 new episodes of Most Wanted Treasures. The Most Wanted Treasures episodes will air over multiple seasons. Biography documentaries focused on Steve Austin, Roddy Piper, Randy Savage, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, Ultimate Warrior, Mick Foley, Bret Hart aired in 2021. The first season of Most Wanted Treasures was hosted by A.J. Francis who was released by WWE last November. The show, which features WWE wrestlers and legends, quotes, takes viewers on a journey to find some of WWE's... So anyway, the reason I'm uh, smiling about this is uh, I actually was approached with the idea of auditioning to host that show. I didn't even think about it for two seconds. Because number one, I never would have gotten it. But uh, can you imagine... A.J. Francis. Top dollar took my job. For America, for uh, wrestling's most wanted treasures. WWE Rivals, working title of the new series, given a 40-hour order. It's going to chronicle the little-known stories behind the biggest clashes in WWE history. Episodes will include revelatory insights from those who were a part of the rivalries that often extended far beyond the ring and the camera. So it's a big deal for WWE. I think you all know the story right now. These folks are creating content. That's what this is all about. Content. And if I got a content creator for you in WWE, so hopefully we'll get some cool bios. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Cool bios. I, I guess so. Um, 130 hours of programming, uh, more things inked with A&E means at some point down the line, if A&E decides, hey, we want to be more of a, a general programming option, that means there could be another bidder involved for one of the WWE's programs down the line. You never know. It could happen. They have the History Channel. They have Lifetime. They have other things associated with them. But they don't have that 
TBS. They don't have a USA. They don't actually really have that, even though A&E is kind of in that same thing. They do all put out original series, all that sort of stuff. If they ever wanted to take a little bit of a different direction, hey, good. There, there's some, some deal there with WWE that could be beneficial to them down the line. So WWE Rivals, I thought there was a Rivals back on the old, maybe it was Classics on Demand or on the WWE Network. I thought they had a program about that, but I don't know. It, I never watched Most Wanted Treasures. Uh, I, I saw very little of it and very little of the biographies and what I did see. I wasn't all that big of a fan of, but then again, it, this stuff isn't also made for me. It's made for the, you know, more of the general viewer, more of the, you know, the person, the lapsed viewer that, you know, oh, my kid liked WrestleMania. I remember that Hulk Hogan guy or whatever it is. And that's what a lot of this kind of stuff is made for. So I'm not upset about it. It's another inroads for them on a, on another network. They, they secure that relationship and. Uh, good. Again, I think for a lot of the people listening, the real diehards, I, a lot of this stuff I don't think is really necessarily meant for them. Got some ratings notes here. We'll get to Raw after the commercial break. Friday Night SmackDown, 2.114 million viewers on Fox, down 2.7%. Lowest viewership for the show since December 3rd of last year. Although, quite frankly, 2.114 million, that's not bad. 18 to 49, SmackDown led all of television, 0.57 Number was up 5.6% from the February 18th edition of the show. Something funny about this, I'll get to it in a minute. AW Rampage, 473,000 viewers. Now, the good news is it was up 0.4% from last week. The bad news is last week it aired at 7 o'clock, and all I heard was that people forgot the show was on. So, literally, they were out of their normal time slot. They returned to their regular time slot, and they were only up 0.4%. This is a bad number. And the uh, 18 to 49, 0.18, down 10% from when they aired at 7 o'clock outside of their time slot. Now, here's what is uh, interesting and funny about this, because you know everyone saw this uh, this number, and they... They lost their minds. You know, you know how it goes. Bad number, ship sinking, hit the iceberg. You know that, Mike? You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, what actually happened was, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm just flabbergasted. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but we went to war. Not necessarily us, but like a war broke out. And uh, the, the news numbers on Friday night were like through the roof because of war. So uh, Rampage, which usually uh, ranks very, very high on the cable charts, they were 46th on the cable charts, okay? So uh, they got killed by the news. That's what happened. And what's, what's interesting is we've mentioned this before, and here is yet another example of it. When there is stuff going on in the real world, I don't know why, I just know it happens, AW gets killed, and WWE is barely affected. WWE has an audience where, you know, we could have a zombie apocalypse and uh, could be all over the news. Uh, damn it, we're watching SmackDown. AW, of course, there's a zombie apocalypse, and the AW fans decide we got to find out what's going on here. I don't want to get eaten by zombies. So, why that is, I cannot explain it to you, but. Uh, you know, SmackDown, barely affected by the news. Rampage, drastically affected by the news. And this is not an aberration. This happens on a regular basis, particularly... There's always, like, news on Wednesdays for some reason. Wednesday's, like, news day. But anyway, that's what happened. Those are your numbers. It's just always bad for AEW when news breaks on Friday or Thursday night going into Friday because... It's a bad night. They just they, there's no good real time slot for them on Fridays. If you go at eight or nine, be oh, well, just put it on at eight or nine. You're going to get eaten up by sports, and you still have the problem with people going out. You have a problem with your your fan base, your most loyal viewers, the ones that are a little bit more conscious of what's taking place in the world, aren't as set in their ways. You know, they they still have things to do. It's just it's a tough night, and when any time news happens. 
you know, I can't remember during the, uh, I, you know, I, I really can't remember back with, with the riots going on and, and some of the, the protesting that took place exactly how bad Rampage was hurt. But it's a it's a cold show, unfortunately, right now, as far as viewership goes, as far as there being any reason for people to feel, you know, jacked up. I, I, I don't again, it goes back to I'm not sure what the answer is on Friday other than trying to spread the show out as much as possible, putting replays on maybe in strategic locations throughout the week you know, true TV and using some of the your other options that you have at your disposal to try to generate some interest. Cause it's just, it is a tough deal all the way around made even worse when there was, when there's news taking place. All right. Uh, very quickly after raw last night, we've got some more, uh, WrestleMania updates for those of you that, uh, are looking to, should I go? Should I not go? We had a big discussion about this yesterday. So here is the uh, update as of right now. These are announced matches and the days they will be taking place. Charlotte Flair, Ronda Rousey, night one. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, night one. Rey Mysterio and Dominic versus The Miz and Logan Paul, night one. Night two, we've got Lesnar and Roman Reigns in the unification match. And then uh, announced, but not yet uh, slotted, AJ Styles versus Edge. And Carmella and Queen Zelina versus Naomi and Sasha Banks. Those are the uh, announced matches. Obviously, there are more matches that we're aware of but have not been announced. So uh, back in the moment with that, Raw and more, Observer Live. Um, let's talk about Raw. Oh, my favorite part of the week. There's some good wrestling on this show. So it opened up with the KO show with Alpha Academy, which was not my favorite segment on the show. It was infuriatingly annoying, and it sucked. But the story is that uh, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins do not have a clear path to either night of WrestleMania. This show is so stupid sometimes, but I watch it. So anyway, they have no path to WrestleMania. You know, they, they, they're not going to be able to get on the card. So uh, they got to figure out a way, and they want to become the tag team champions. Wait a second, wait a second. Just throwing this in here. There have been times where the tag team champions have not been on WrestleMania. Don't so. overthink this. Just saying. Because if you want to overthink, let's talk about what happened next. It is Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens versus the tag team champions Alpha Academy. Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens just won. They just won a number one contenders match. But it is a it is very specific. They will only get their championship match in a three-way next week. So even though they're the number one contenders, they've earned a shot at the tag team championships. Oh, they can't have it in this one-on-one -on -one tag team match. So Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens, as number one contenders, they face the tag team champions. They beat them, but the titles are not on the line. I was not letting Dave get away with this one, but he just kept going. That this made sense. This makes no sense. They're the number one contenders. So anyway, they beat Alpha Academy. It was a good match. Very good match. Omos squashed T-Bar in 39 seconds. Then we add Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and Liv Morgan versus Becky Lynch, Dewdrop, and Nikki Ash. Another 12-minute match. Uh, by the way, those, those things I talked about, that was the entire first hour. So this was another good match. Uh, everybody worked hard, and uh, the highlight of the match, except for uh, Becky Lynch, was when uh, Bianca took her ponytail and she just starts whipping poor Becky Lynch. And man, I watched it. And you ever seen those old WWE shows that are taped and they edit in some goofy sound effect? Bro, she whipped her with this this ponytail, and it sounded like a cannon went off in the Civil War. And I thought, oh, my God. Then I realized it was live. That was the actual sound. She whipped her, as Jim Ross would say, like a government mule. And Becky's got these these marks all over her body. Her skin's broke. It was brutal. Mm -hmm. Oh, Indust my God. Industrial strength beeswax on Yeah, those, you idiots uh, don't like the build of this braids. match again? Huh? Mm-hmm. Dude, this was great. Then we had Ciampa beating Robert Roode quickly. Two minutes. They, listen, they're they're trying to get you to watch NXT by bringing NXT people and storylines to the main roster, but they give it two minutes. It's like, why did you even bother? Like, if you're gonna do it, give me something where I'm like, man, I want to tune in tomorrow to see the tag match. And this is over. I did not feel that way. 
We had Dana and Reggie beating Tamina and Akira Tozawa in one minute. And then afterwards, remember all that cool, those cool storylines they did with Reggie and uh, Dana? Yeah, well, it was all for naught. They're back together again. Now they're kissing again. And now Akira Tozawa and Tamina have a romance. Because why not? Got to attract the women viewers. We had Ray and Dominic coming out, and then Miz cut every promo he's ever cut. Did you know that Miz has won a lot of belts in his career? Huh? Yeah. God, can you imagine if I came on this show every day, and like every day I had to talk about, you know I wrote two books? Actually, basically three books. Do you know? I should start every show. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, uh, three-time Wrestling Observer Book of the Year winner, best-selling author of Death of WCW, uh, the original version, and the, uh, whatever you call it, the longer version. Also, 100 things WWE fans should know and do before they die. In sixth grade, I won Student of the Year alongside Chris Walla of Death Cab for Cutie, which is true, by the way. And I'm the Texarkana Television Mm. Champion. I've got a black belt from Pedro Sauer. First degree, by the way. Should be second, but I haven't seen him because there's a pandemic. Anyway, <laughs> now let's get moving. God, how annoying that would be. I didn't even mention my my ring. Shelton Benjamin mm-hmm. and Cedric Alexander, of course, beat Ray and Dominic. Because what better way to build up Ray and Dominic uh, versus Miz and Logan Paul than to beat the Mysterios with a team that never wins? So that was lame. And then we had uh, the Street Profits. Uh, actually, first we had Queen Zelina and Carmella do a segment work. You remember yesterday where I go, okay, we got Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar in a unification match where the belts aren't going to be unified for very long. I'm just going to go back to what they had. We're going to have uh, Vince McMahon wrestling, even though he's not actually going to wrestle. Well, now Carmella and Zelina are going to retain the tag titles against um, uh, Sasha Banks and, uh, and Naomi. And then Carmella is going to have sex. <laughs> that's that's what they're advertising. <laughs> Buy your tickets now. That's night one if you want to see sex. Night one of WrestleMania. Uh, Street Profits versus Randy Orton and Riddle. Uh, poor Randy Orton. Actually, I shouldn't say poor Randy Orton because I haven't heard an update today. So what happened was Montez Ford gave him the big frog splash and Randy Orton sold it like his heart uh, came out his neck or whatever he's ah dying and everything like that the referee's down there everyone's checking on the poor guy he pretends or i shouldn't say pretends let me just tell you what happened he tries to get his foot on the rope montez pushes the rope off he gets pinned he's you know they they're all checking on the guy and it looked bad but i did hear i did hear from somebody there that they think this guy was just working because he was doing a job so I don't know if that's the case or not, but since I haven't heard any update on Randy Orton today, I'm presuming the guy's all right. Not saying he was necessarily faking it, but um, hopefully he's all right. Let's just put it that way. Austin Theory with Vince. They're already building up this Pat McAfee show. Austin Theory says he's going to be there. So in case, in case for some reason Pat McAfee just tries to attack Vince in the middle of an interview... Because, you know, that happens all the time. Uh, Austin Theory's going to be there to save the day. Oh, my God. Yeah. Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Good match, 11 minutes. And I'm watching the match, and uh, Finn Balor hits the drop kick in the corner. He starts going up top. I'm waiting for somebody to run in. I'm waiting for somebody to set something up for Finn Balor and WrestleMania. It didn't happen. He did the double foot stomp, and he pinned Priest in the middle of the ring, and he won the title. What? So then Damian Priest says, I'm going to win that belt back. And you know what? When I do, I'm not going to care about these fans. These fans have never given me the respect I have deserved. They, these fans, never cheer. I'm like, what? (laughs) Turned into Loki there. You know, someone um, someone made a comment. They were like, look at that MJF promo where he basically talked about his, his real life and his, his uh, villain origin story and how incredible it was. And WWE's got one, one heel promo. It's not like they got like six heel promos and they like interlock them. So like, okay, you're going to take this part and then this part, uh, but take out. No, it's the same promo. No matter who you are, if you're a heel, it's those fans. The fans never gave me the respect I deserve. 
Like, bro. So anyway, he's a heel now. And uh, and we had a heel turn. And what better way to follow up on a heel turn than another heel turn? Edge came out. Why does nobody want to face me at WrestleMania? Well, because the match is going to go 49 minutes and drag. So anyway, uh, AJ Styles finally comes out. And uh, they go face to face, and Edge offers a handshake, and then he boots him in the nards, as we used to call him in high school, and uh, beats him down, and then gives him two of the uh, concertos. So it is Edge as a heel against AJ Styles as a babyface coming up at WrestleMania. Should, I mean, if they don't go 46 minutes, if they like keep it at a reasonable time, like 16, 17 minutes, that match could be a show stealer. I'm begging you. Let's make this a show stealer. In this case, it's it is it is not a marathon, it's a sprint, okay? It's like the start of high speed title. <laughs> Let's do it that way instead of the uh the other way. Oh. You know what I'm saying? That's right, everybody. I have so much fun doing the raw report. Can you tell? Oh, I have such a great time. So it's it's uh almost as much fun as I have doing cameos. F4W online on Cameo, everybody. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle at WrestleMania, right? What? Is that it is? what we're gonna have? I don't know. What are we gonna have for those two at WrestleMania? Well, what they what they said, or what Randy Orton said, uh or Riddle or somebody was they were never gonna be a team. Randy was gonna turn on him the next week, which by the way, when they started this storyline, I thought, man, this is awesome. And like the fans love it, and they're You know, they got to go with this, but they're probably going to break them up next week. That was the plan. But then, turned out it was working, and so they they let it go. And I hope they they keep it up because it's a fun, well, we need another Randy Orton heel run as a single. Dude, this is new and fun and interesting. Like, let him go. That's what I say. Hmm. Be interesting to see what they do there. Orton and Riddle, they actually wait... Uh, through WrestleMania, and they, they come out of it. Can you imagine them turning Riddle? That's probably what they do is, because uh, nobody would see it coming. They would turn Riddle dirty on Randy Orton, and then he'd have to, like, you know. And actually, maybe, you know what, maybe that's not the worst idea in the world because I'm trying to figure out the money-drawing, angry promo that Matt Riddle could cut. You know what I mean? Maybe he's better off being the smarmy heel in this exchange with Randy Orton being the baby face if they ever decided to turn the two against each other. But with the lack of tag teams that they do have and the fact that they are great together and the fact that it, in theory, is more relaxing for Randy Orton to do as part of a team, I'd, I'd love to see him stay. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. Yes, everybody, I must take a leave at this point for the show today. Mike is going to take over. This will happen occasionally on Tuesdays as a result of a babysitting issue. Is that anyway, what they call putting more bronzer on now? Oh, get out of here. This is the MJF filter. Were you not here at the beginning of this show? No, wait. That, that is way too. That is blended way too well, actually, for it to be the MJF filter. You're not wow. orange and uh, 17 wow. different shades of it. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not 25. I'm experienced. <laughs> That's anyway, what I've heard. That's why you got to go run in to take care of some things. I'm out of here. Mike's going to take over. <laughs> I, I bid you all adieu and good night or whatever the line is. And uh, I'll talk to you again after a while. There we go. Boss man out of here. He'll be back <laughs> tomorrow, obviously, on this show and with Brian and Vinny tonight, too. But uh, off he goes and left me with... Uh, the last segment here to, to 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 go ahead and fill in on, and I will mention there was the New Japan show. So we talk about old people coming back for WWE, including Vince McMahon. And I wonder too now with Madison Square Garden, with Paul Heyman saying that we were going to have a very fitting person to take the place of Bobby Lashley. He is sure there's going to be a high quality replacement that goes into that match with Brock Lesnar. God, I hope it's Vince McMahon. I hope Vince actually, and you know what? They need to sell tickets for that thing anyway. Let Vince do a big bait and switch. Announce it's going to be Vince and Brock Lesnar at at, at Russell or at Madison Square Garden. And then you could have whatever happens, you know, Pat McAfee comes out there, begs Vince not to do it. Uh, or, or actually, who the hell knows? Because what, what is the deal with Pat McAfee now and Vince McMahon? Is this to, to get 
Austin Theory over? Is this to get an Austin Theory Pat McAfee match? That would make sense. Corey Graves has been cleared. Is that just to take a bump? Will we get Corey Graves in place of Vince McMahon to face Pat McAfee? Will any of this actually come to play and come to pass when it comes time for WrestleMania? I don't know. And I don't know how I got off on that tangent either. But New Japan, the 50th anniversary show, took place, yes, on this day back in 1972. They they came to be at the hands of Antonio Inoki, and they had the the big six-man tag team match that Kota Ibushi was supposed to be a part of and obviously could not go. I don't know what that says exactly either in the fact that, you know, he had been gone for a while, and they announced him to come back, and then... He's he's not. <laughs> it's, it's not a good situation when it when it comes to Tenzan not being involved. He is so broken down that it doesn't surprise me. Although again, a little bit depressing that they would announce this thinking he'd be ready to go and he's not able to go. But Koto Bushi ended up not being in the match. Minoru Suzuki, Zack Saber Jr., and Yoshiaki Fujiwara faced off against Tanahashi Okada and Tatsumi Fujinami. As I've lost the ability to speak. Fujinami, 68 years old. Fujiwara, 72 years old. Uh, Tanahashi, Okada, and Fujinami got the victory. I haven't had a chance to to see the the, the match yet. Uh, Okada uh, ended up pinning Suzuki uh, with the Rainmaker. uh, Second Rainmaker attempt to go ahead and win that. So he ends up getting the victory there. Now begins, of course, the New Japan Cup, the never-ending 75 million person New Japan Cup that, look, I- I'm sure this is being done for several reasons. One, to try to breathe some life into that roster and into what they have going on right now and into this tour. They got to try to sell tickets to this tour. So you have, you know, guys out there, people wonder, well, why is this person not getting, you know, a, a buy? Probably because they want this person to have an extra match and-, and to try to draw eyes to New Japan World and try to draw some ticket sales. Is this going to work for them? I don't know. I have no interest in it whatsoever. Uh, am I sure it's probably going to you know, have some good matches in it, and it's probably going to end with a pretty cool final, maybe? Is this the time that Sonata wins it? Because Sonata's never won it before he's the U.S. champion. Could you use that as a way for him to be you know, bumped into a title shot or something like that? It's It's possible. You know, there's a lot of different ways they could go with this, but... They're going to, it's going to have to meet itself out for me. I've been so disappointed for so long with what's gone on in New Japan, and they've done so little to be able to capture my attention. And I think it's been that way with a lot of Western fans at the very least. Um, You know, even in Japan, it doesn't seem like people are that enthused with what's going on right now. So we'll have to see how that all kind of plays itself out. But it is, you know, we'll see as it gets towards the end. And exactly what kind of feuds or or different types of stories or angles are able to build out of this thing. But on the surface right now, it just seems overdone and it just seems, you know, too much. John Moxley has got an opponent, his opponent for Bloodsport 8. It ends up being Biff Busick, uh, the former Oni Lorcan, who was released on November 5th as part of another round of WWE cuts. He is going to Bloodsport, Josh Barnett's Bloodsport. He's, Josh Barnett has begun to announce a lot of these matches that are going to be taking place at GCW's Collective. That show is going to be taking place on Thursday, March 31st. Moxley and Busick. So that is the first, I believe, match that's been announced so far. I'm sorry, second match that's been announced so far. Minoru Suzuki and Chris Dickinson has also been announced and what has got to be surely a thrill for Chris Dickinson. As of now, Masha Slamovich has been announced. Janai Kai, Timothy Thatcher, Jonah, Marina Shafir, and I guess the surprising name would be John Hennigan. So he'll go back to being Johnny Collegiate Rutgers wrestling or johnny blood sport or whatever it's going to be but uh johnny nitro johnny everything john hennigan what is his name right now Uh, johnny i forget what it is but regardless he's going to be at that show as well too also for gcw's collective weekend they have announced that Shane Taylor's crew, and let me pull this up here, uh, Shane Taylor uh, Promotions is going to be facing off against, 
Swerve Scott's former crew that's now known as, I believe, just the Hitmakers uh, is what they are going on on the indie scene. Brian early on mentioned AJ Francis, uh, B-Fab, the whole crew gets back together. As of now, Swerve, not uh, not, not technically part of that, but uh, the whole rest of the crew is going to be facing off against Shane Taylor Promotions, and that's going to be at the For the Culture event. So a lot of things starting to come together, uh, not only for GCW and all the zillion of the shows that they have taking place uh, for them on WrestleMania weekend, but all over the place uh, as well. Joey Janela and X-Pac announced for spring break night two, I believe it is. I'm sorry, for night one. Uh, that's also when John Moxie will face, face AJ Gray and Alex Colon will face John Wayne Murdoch for the ultra-violent title. That whole deal with Janela and X-Pac came to be when Janela turned on him during the L.A. weekend of shows that took place for GCW this past weekend. So a whole bunch of stuff going on there as things kind of start to fall into place for us. WrestleMania weekend. There's still wrestlers I see all over the place trying to get themselves book. Hey, I'm going to be in town uh, and trying to get uh, signed on all over the place. A and E or A and E A W that is who's not going to be on A and E, but they are going to be back on tour. Brian mentioned a bunch of dates yesterday that that they had talked about. Obviously, going to Southern California for the first time, not only running the forum but running, I guess, right outside Rancho Cucamonga as well too, uh, where the, where the uh, the Young Bucks are from. So they've also announced that they're running Baltimore and Houston. And the interesting thing is for the show in Baltimore. Uh, that's going to be a dynamite. They are not going to be at the Baltimore Arena. They are going to be at the Chesapeake Arena or the Chesapeake Employers Insurance Arena. Uh, That is UMBC, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. That is where Ring of Honor usually runs its pay-per-views and its shows uh, from that building. It's a good-sized building, significantly smaller than the Baltimore Arena, significantly further away from the city. This is in Catonsville. Uh, The Baltimore Arena is right in downtown Baltimore. It is right there. So this is actually going out of the way a little bit, uh, running into the county. So I'm not sure what the reasoning is in there, although... Certainly going to be a lot cheaper, that's for sure, than probably running the Baltimore Arena is being out there, where, again, Ring of Honor has been, and uh, they're certainly uh, well-versed at setting up wrestling shows. They're also going to be in Houston, they announced as well, too. Uh, That is going to be on May uh, let's see, that is now going to be on, let's see, May 11th, or so, I'm sorry, March 11th is when the tickets go on sale, and May 18th is when they're going to have their Dynamite show. So add those two to the mix as well, too, for AEW running Baltimore and Houston now. So that is that. I didn't see Dark. Apparently there were 11 matches announced for this week's AEW Dark. I never watched Dark. I never... Never see Elevation, never see any of those shows. Not a whole else lot going on right now. Thank God for that, actually. I'm, I'm good with it. Cain Velasquez, this deal with him uh, booked on the attempted murder charge. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, nothing else has gone on about that. But, uh, yeah, so <laughs> no bueno there. Just Can we have at least, you know, that's a terrible story. We've had nothing but terrible stories in the news recently. I'm ready for I need a wacky story to break. You know, as much as I'm, I'm, I'm happy about the fact that that Cody and AEW and all that whole situation, the way it's gone, I was kind of I was dying for that story to go away. Now, with stories like Cain Velasquez, with what's going on in, in the real world and news in Ukraine and Russia and everything else, I'm now dying for a ridiculous story to kind of come to pass here and, and take some of the attention away of, of what's been going on. So good Lord. Um, Reed Bentley, Planet Death, that's also part of the GCW show as I scroll around just just looking for stuff to fill the void for right now. Really, with wrestling, there's not much I really want to talk about. I had a bunch of stuff here from earlier on. Don't want to talk about any of this. No, none of that. Steve Austin's going to come back to face Kevin Owens. Still trying to wrap my brain around that one. Steve Austin didn't come back for... For anything, didn't come back for Bill Goldberg, didn't come back for Shawn Michaels, didn't come back for The Rock, didn't come back for 
for Roman Reigns, didn't come back for John Cena, didn't come back for anything, is going to come back for Kevin Owens. And this story, again, apparently is not out there anywhere because nobody is talking about it. I'm blown away by the fact that nobody is talking about this. And I know some of the attention, again, it, it may be because it needs to break out there. And I know wrestling fans are still wondering over what the, the deal is going to be with the announcement from Tony Khan. And maybe that's what's taking all the attention, but it blows me away that Steve Austin, after all of this time, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the biggest wrestling name arguably in the history of the world, may be coming back and nobody's paying attention to it at all. Nobody's making a big deal out of it at all. I don't know what that says about expectations. I don't know what that says about anything, but it's crazy. All the attention seems to be with Tony Khan. I don't know. Streaming service seems to make sense, especially because Turner doesn't have one of any repute or value, certainly of no value to AEW. They have all this stuff. They have these 95-match dark and elevation cards that they have bunch of footage put that on put that up let that go have that and maybe maybe you do buy shimmer maybe you do they do make a decision by one of the other uh, streaming libraries out there or try to bring people together the nwa look dave marquez has had stuff for years has got a lot of people's stuff uh, on tape that he's been recording for championship wrestling from hollywood and the other promotions that he's got i don't know who's got that but I don't know. That may be what it is. It may not be what it is. Maybe he's got a bunch of new names coming in. Maybe it's Cesaro. Who knows what it is. But Tony Khan, for anything you want to say about him, he seems to get a lot more attention than what WWE is getting right now. And they didn't even have to bring back any old men. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi here with something producer Dom just said that amazed me about Stephen Adams. I just I don't, I don't believe it, but Major League Baseball final CBA offer to Players Union prior to a 5 p.m. Eastern deadline. This is the best they're going to be able to do, says Major League Baseball. This is not the story I was looking for to brighten my day with all this other negativity going on. And something tells me I'm not going to get any support from NXT tonight either. I, uh, you know, we didn't even look at what the preview was going to be. I guess let me let me rush over to WWE.com and see what they have all set up for tonight's show. That I'm sure again is not going to give me the the nutrients uh, to to better my soul that I need here. Although the the there is, I will say this. I did forget about this from last week. The the challenge was laid down by the bruiserweight uh pete dunn to face uh, carmelo hayes for the north american championship that is probably going to be very good i am looking forward to that hopefully they give them the time that they need braun breaker and tommaso champa of course also in their tag team match facing off against the dirty dogs they went off the air with a brawl last week obviously tommaso champa on raw this week too to kind of uh, to give that a little bit of a spark as well, too. I still wonder down the line, especially after WrestleMania, if we don't have more of a blurring of the lines with NXT 2.0, it'll still be looked at as that little brother, but we have a lot more kind of interaction when they need it, especially on a show like Raw, where they're constantly trying to fill three hours. I do wonder if, if some of that's going to go away a little bit. Gunther's probably going to want to get his uh, revenge on Baby Oose as well, too. Have that as well as Von Wagner answering Andre Chase's open challenge. All that and more for Brian to fill a whole segment with tomorrow. Thank you, Producer Dom, Producer Jared, and everybody else out there. Talk to you again after a while. <laughs>